Hi, I'm so glad you bought this kit. This is a classic ensemble of the 1860s, also called Enfantine style. It consists of the dress, a chemisette, a hat, and a matching cape. I think this is actually um, a, a very, as I said, a very classic style, trimmed with the black velvet ribbon, which will be in your kit, um, the black feather, uh, the streamers in the back, and the black velvet on the cape. I hope that you have fun with this. It was fun putting this together for you, and I can't wait to see what you make of it. Thank you. So we've started to pull a thread, and you see that it's sort of bunching up here. It shows you that you're pulling the thread on the grain of the fabric, which is really important when you're doing tucks. Just going to very gently sort of work it out so you create this little line that you see here. And that's exactly the center of our piece of fabric, which is important. So I'm going to show you the next step. You're basically going to be marking lines where you want to have either your ribbon trim, your lace overlay, and then you're going to start measuring out for your tucks. And I'll um, show you how that's going to work uh, in the next clip. So we're marking our tucks on each side of this panel of lace. I haven't sewn the lace on yet, but that's fine because I know where the center of the lace is because of that pulled thread. I'm doing about approximately a half an inch on either side of the lace for the first tuck. And then I'm marking three eighths of an inch. We're going to have four tucks on each side of this. So you're going to see that I'm using the Frixion uh, pen, which is wonderful because it does um, disappear with heat. If you're not comfortable with that, you can always just maybe mark it with a little pin or a little pencil mark or something that's closer to the cut edge where you know you're not going to be um, seeing it. I like to have everything where I can see it pretty clearly. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to pull these threads where we've marked them, pull them this way. And I'm going to do that. And then I will come back and show you the next step. So we've pulled all of our threads. You can see here's your center line. Here are your full four tuck folds on each side of the fabric. We've lightly starched it. I like to use this best press, Mary Ellen's best press, but any kind of starch you want to use is fine, really, as long as you're comfortable with it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, the starch gives it a nice crisp fold. We're going to find that fold line and we're going to iron along it. So what I've done is I've ironed along that edge and then we're going to establish, <laughs> my little dog's barking, we're going to establish a, um, the, uh, the distance of the tuck. So in this case, I think I've made this a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. You can really make these however you want. I mean, know that the, the bigger the tuck, um, the less fabric you're going to have. So I'm working within about an eighth of an inch, a little under an eighth of an inch here. So I've just made a little mark for myself. If you want, you know, you can always just actually measure it out exactly and make a mark or a line to sew on, whatever is easiest for you or you're most comfortable with. In this case, I'm just going to really do a little indication of where I want that to start and then follow it along visually. So I will start to thread my needle and I will show you how to um, sew these down. So here we are sewing our first, our first tuck. We're taking relatively tiny stitches. I love how, um, I can't remember which instructor said they were mouse size stitches, but I always think of these as being done by some little 10 year old girl in 1860 in her convent school you know, and some, <laughs> some nun coming by and saying they're not, stitches aren't small enough. Smaller, smaller, so you can't even see them with a with the naked eye. But, you know, we all aspire to having those sewing skills of the 19th century because they practiced a lot. This is all they did. So by hand until the machine came in and the machine was being used at this time, but 
think it was probably a relatively new um, innovation. And we're going to be using the machine to sew a little bit of this outfit, but I prefer to do most of this work by hand. So I will continue going down. That's our first, our first row of tucks done. Just out of curiosity, let me see how many stitches there are an inch here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty,
worn like people clothes and have all that wear and laundering. Um, so here we are. And we are going to press that as we did with the other seam towards the back. So now we've got a partially finished, well, partially finished front and partially finished back. The next thing we're going to do is the sleeves and I'm going to show you how to treat those. This is our cuff and we folded up the seam allowance on the top and the bottom. And I let this go off, let's see. This little iron is so great because it tells you when it's gonna go off by beeping. And just press that down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it so those edges exactly meet. There you see, it says it's warmed up. We're going to then press it. Then basically what you've got is a nice sharp edge you can see that. And you've also given yourself a stitching line for both your seam and for when you um, turn it over. So then we've taken our sleeve and we've run gathering stitches. I haven't done it on this one yet, but we've run gathering stitches at the top and the bottom. And you can see that here. We've run the gathering stitches here. We run them on the bottom. And then we've pulled up the bottom to match the width of that cuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stitch along this line, this folded line, which will give us a really, a really nice even seam allowance. And um, I'm actually going to do that by machine. I do do some things by machine if they're going to be hidden and you don't see them, um, or if I need them to have extra strength. So we're going to do that by machine. And then I'm going to show you how to apply some trim to this piece. So we've joined the cuff. Uh, we've joined the cuff. We've pressed our seam allowance towards the cuff in the back. And then what we've done is we're not going to sew this down yet because I'm going to show you the cuff is going to be closed in one uh, in one seam with the side and the underarm uh, sleeve. But we've run a line of the thin black grow grain in the middle of the cuff. So, you know, look at it when it's folded, but again, this is not gonna be sewn down yet. You're just gonna sew this in the middle from the fold to the seam line of the cuff. Then once you've done that, <clears throat> you're going to gather the top of the sleeve and then matching the center of the sleeve to the seam, you're going to gather it to fit, you're going to sew it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're going to trim and overcast. So really our next step here is we're going to, once we've put the other sleeve on, we're going to match our cuff seam, the top of the cuff, the under seam, under arm seam of the, of the sleeve, and then the edges here, we're gonna pin that. We're gonna sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to trim it and we're gonna overcast it. Again, you can do a, um, a French seam if you want to. Um, you know, it's a really beautiful finish on this type of fabric. But again, I'm just gonna use a quarter inch seam, um, trim it and overcast it. We're gonna then do the other sleeve. And then um, when we uh, come back, we're going to show you how to fit this to your doll because once the underarm seams are done and the side seams are done, you're going to be able to estimate your closure in the back, how much to actually turn over. You know, one thing um, also just to say, and I hadn't said it earlier, is that when you're doing this, it's always best to fit to your doll as you go. Um, at this point, there's really nothing that you've had to fit um, because there are no side seams or, or closures yet. But um, in order to get a really good fit, you need to try it on the doll. And you also need to have it on the doll with its underclothes because those change the the bulk and the, and the silhouette. So um, we'll continue to sew the sleeve on, as I said, sew the side seams up, trim and overcast, and then we'll show you how to do the back closure. 
we're preparing our pieces for the following elements. Uh, the collar. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a left collar and a right collar. Our waistband, we've taken the waistband and we folded over the seam allowance on the top and the bottom. And then just with the, like with the cuffs, we've um, folded it so the edges meet, the folded edges meet, and we have put a nice crease in that fold. And then for the neck facing, what we're going to do is we're going to take up the seam allowance on one edge, and this just makes it easier when you have to sew it in place. And you'll see what I'm talking about. And then um, sometimes I find it easier if you create a sort of a gentle curve with your iron. You know, it's not a, a drastic curve, it's just a gentle curve. It sort of helps it to maintain its shape when you sew it to the neckline. Um, we have already um, pinned and positioned, uh, turned over and, um, and hemmed our back opening. Um, I have this on this great little um, mannequin that um, you can get, I believe, um, on Etsy and I can uh, give you the, or Etsy or eBay, I can give you the link to that. Um, there's a pattern I think, and I think you can also have them made for you by this great um, lady. Um, but uh, also I've taken some, I pinned it so we had the fit. Um, have also taken a running stitch, stitches, two gathering stitches, and from sort of the a little bit past the side seam um, to a little bit before uh, where uh, this stitch line is um, on both sides. And I have like uh, gathered it up to fit the waist because there's a little bit of fullness that needs to be pulled in there. So what we're going to be doing in our next step is we're going to be showing you how to attach the waistband, and then we'll move on to the collar. So we've pinned on the waistband to the bottom of the chemise set. This isn't exactly as even as it should be <laughs> in my example here, but um, if you fold the waistband in half, um, find your center point and start pinning from there. And then you're going to have um, a little bit extra on each end, probably about a quarter of an inch, give or take. So what you're going to do before you do anything further is you're going to stitch along this line. You can do this by machine or a running back stitch just so it's stronger. Um, you're going to turn it over and you're going to enclose your waistband. Let me just see if I can approximate this for you. Let's say this is already stitched. You're going to enclose your waistband and by enclosing it you're going to be folding into the inside the, the little bit of extra and folding it on the fold line. You've already had your, your fold line at the bottom. And then you're going to be sewing it with a slip stitch to the inside of the waistband. You can probably take a couple little extra stitches on the sides too to enclose it. And that's what we're going to do with this. Um, I did want to show you what we have been doing with the collar as well. We stitched it together only on the right side, left side, and the bottom side. We're leaving the top side open. And then here's one that I've already clipped the corners and turned inside out. And we're just going to give that a little press. It's cut on the bias, so it should have some nice give to it. And then we're going to run our ribbon along the edge. I'm going to do that and then I will come back and show you both pieces finished and how we attach them to the collar. We've sewn our waistband in place with a slip stitch. We've turned it over, tucked in those ends as we had discussed. And we have trimmed both of the collars sides, the left and the right with the black grain trim. Just with a running stitch, we've mitered the corner and then we've just turned it over. There's no need to seal this edge. Uh, it's not really going to be getting a lot of wear unless you want to, but just a little running stitch holding that in place. Now what we're going to do is with that bias band that we've already prepared, we're going to find the center of that band. There we go. And we're going to be stitching this, placing it on the front 
right side to right side. And we're going to be pinning it in place. We've already basted our collar in place to keep it in place. And keep it, so we're not using a lot of pins. And then once you've pinned this, it's very similar to the waistband. You're not going to trim off all of it. You're gonna leave about a quarter of an inch. You're gonna continue over onto this side. Trim your quarter of an inch. Okay. So that little curve that you pressed into it is really helping it to sort of keep its shape a bit. We're going to sew this along the uh, top edge or away from the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then we're going to uh, clip it. Make sure you don't clip into your stitches, but that just helps it to sort of like ease the curve a little bit. Um, trim it if you want to, you don't really need to. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the collar. We're going to be turning this over. We're going to be tucking in these ends and we're going to be stitching it in place on the on the back edge or the back side rather of the chemi set. So um, I will do that and then I will show you the um, the finished chemi set on our doll. Um, you'll see that uh, we're going to be putting in three buttons and three um, thread loop closures on the back. Just to show you a little bit of that detail, we've already pressed over our seam allowance on one of these long edges of the neck facing. Um, we've sewn it in position and then we've turned it to the inside to do the facing and we've pinned it in place. And we're gonna do this with a tiny slip stitch along here. Now the majority of it's going to be covered with the collar so you won't really see that that stitching from the outside. And then, you know, just basically because you've cut this collar on the bias, it has a nice roll to it. So we will stitch that up. And as I said, come back and show you uh, the finished product with the buttons and thread loops. So I just wanted to show you the finished chemisette on the doll. Oh, she's not wearing, poor thing's not wearing her wig because I wanted you to see the collar, but um, basically, you know, this fabric is really lovely because it has the sheer quality and you can see through it. Um, you know, here are your tucks. So the Bretels cover some of the tucks, uh, but that's really just a classic, um, a classic style of this period. If you wanted to, you could move um, that first row of tucks and all the rest of the tucks in a little tighter to your lace insertion, but it shows you the collar. And here is your back closure. There's another button that's being um, hidden down there by the um, waistband. So hopefully, you know, you have fun with this. And um, again, you could use this pattern and do other things like trim the edges of the, the, the collar and cuffs with a little narrow lace. Um, you could actually um, do some different embellishment down the front. You could remove this, do a little row of buttons just for a decorative effect. Um, you could embroider. Um, along the edge of this. I think that would really be charming. So um, have fun with this and I hope that you can use it to make lots of different types of shimmy sets for your dolls. We've taken our skirt lining and our dress fabric and we have sewn it together along the bottom aligning the raw edges. Then what we've done is we've trimmed pretty much, probably a little under an eighth of an inch to that seam allowance, and we've turned it to, this, to the right side and pressed it so we have a little reveal. It's nice that you've got a, a little reveal on this side because you're not going to see any tarlatan from the outside. Also, what's so great about this fabric is that it you know, it's a grid, so it allows you to sew a really straight line. <laughs> Although my line isn't as straight as it could be, but it allows you to straight, like a, a stitching line, a stitching guide um, with these 
um, the horizontal uh, stripes. So once we've done that, uh, we've pressed the edge, so we have a nice sharp edge. Then we've basted approximately an inch to an inch and a half from the top of the raw edge. And um, this is something that I believe um, is very typical in dresses of this period, and at least I've learned in workshops and from other instructors, is that um, the front of the dress, which is, this is the center front, um, it would be cut a little bit shorter um, than the back of the dress. And this was really to um, allow the skirt to fall um, evenly over the hoop because there's a little bit more concentration in the back for the hoop. So it's a little longer back there. It's perfectly normal and it's gonna give you a great effect. So what we've done, and I'll turn this over so you can see a little bit clearer. We found our center point, center line. We've marked it with a pin. We have found the halfway point between that center point and we've marked that with a pin. We've done the same thing on the other side and marked it with a pin. So basically you have quartered your fabric. And then I'm just gonna show this to you from the back because it really won't matter once you've um, you flipped this over, which is what we're gonna do in one of the next steps. But I've drawn um, a, a point half an inch from the top of that center point below the cut edge or the raw edge. And then I have drawn lines from the middle to the center and from this middle to the center. So you're gonna have this sort of gradation, like a V-shape here. And that's what's going to provide you with that beautiful curve. Um, one thing I'm gonna show you now, and um, I just also want to describe it. Oh, I've basted this, as I said before, to hold these pieces together, because now we're treating this as one piece of fabric, uh, lining and dress fabric alone. I think one of the things that is really up to you, but I like to do, and I don't think they would have, they definitely would have, would not have overcast this. They may have pinked this and they wouldn't have overcasted this because they didn't want any additional bulk because this is gonna be gathered up very tightly to fit that waistband. So what I do is I trim it with a pinking shears. And this is a scalloped pinking shears. You can use whatever pinking shears you want, but you know, this is going to unravel. This, as you can see, as I'm pulling it right now, there's a lot of um, loose threads that come here, but when you've pinked it, you don't really get a lot of those loose thread, threads, rather, and you don't want those threads showing up all over your doll's underclothes and hanging out and looking messy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to pink along this top edge, and I'm just trimming off some of the fringe that's because the threads have pulled from the top raw edge. And then you're going to follow that line and cut along it all the way. So you're gonna go down here, you're gonna go up, and you're going to go over. So the entire top edge is going to be pinked and you're going to have that little V-shaped dip. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this over approximately a half an inch. Oh, I have a measuring ruler here, it just sort of allows you to keep, so that's approximately a half an inch. Again, um, what's great about this is that you can find a point and just follow that. Just be aware that when you get to this point, you're gonna start angling down. You're no longer gonna be able to use this line as your guide because there's a V here. So it's just going to basically dip a little bit more, but you're always gonna maintain that half an inch. When you get to your center point, you're going to start going up again, but always maintain that half inch fold over. We're going to give that a really good press and I'll just, well, I don't think my iron's on, so I won't give it a really good press now, but once this has all been cut out um, or uh, pinked, we're going to turn this over, give it a really sharp crease at the top, and then I will show you the next step, which will be your cartridge uh, gathering. So we're gonna show you two things here. We've run our gathering stitches approximately a 16th inch, well, probably about a little more than a 16th inch away from the top, one row. We've also used the pattern to evenly space our stitches, which is great because you don't have to use any markings, but you can do whatever you want, really. You can vary these. I think these are about 3 8 stitches, um, 3 8 a 3 8 space, 3 8 and then about an eighth of an inch or 16th of an inch 
below the first line exactly on the same at the same points so you're going to run a second row of gathering stitches now one thing um i'm just going to say and you know everybody has their own way of doing this but i just find this is so much easier to control um i actually only do this up until the center point and then i make a very small knot on the back so here's your your start and notice that i've started this probably about an inch and a quarter away from the cut edge. And the reason for that is I prefer to do um, the decoration, at least at this type of decoration, and the cartridge pleating when the piece is flat. It's just much easier to, to manage. And I've left that space here because you're going to turn under this side for your placket when it's done. So you need at least enough space to be able to clear that placket, <laughs> if you could see that. So um, I also want to talk about the, the embellishment on the skirt. You're going to receive two different widths of black velvet ribbon, really pretty black velvet ribbon from, uh, and I think, it's an, I think it's vintage or antique. Um, you're going to uh, do whatever you want with this, really. This is just a suggestion. But, you know, these sort of three rows of things were very popular in the 1860s. And what we've done is we've put the narrower ribbon at the bottom, placed the thicker ribbon in the middle, and then another row of narrow ribbon at the top. So you have a little bit of this contrast. Uh, what's your, and again, you can do whatever you want. But another thing that's really great about this pattern or about this, this fabric is that it allows you to position things almost exactly on a straight line because you've got these guidelines to follow. So in this case, again, it, it's your decision, but I've put the first row of black velvet ribbon between, uh, well, actually exactly on the center of an existing horizontal black line. And then I've placed the wider between two black lines. And then I've repeated the smaller exactly on top of a black line because it just gives you a nice sort of spacing and feels very intentional. And that's what you really want. So um, I'm going to finish the other side, the cartridge gathers on this side. We're not gonna pull this up yet, but we're just going to get this ready. Um, and then I'm going to apply the black velvet ribbon to the bottom all the way across. Again, we're going to be stitching it uh, with small running, running stitches and black thread on either side of the velvet part of the ribbon. There's a little reveal here that you're gonna be sewing through. And you just really wanna do that on both sides so it's actually very um, flat to the fabric and it, and it stays in place. And just make sure you use a small running stitch so there's no sort of puckers or, or bulging. So we'll do that and then we'll move on to closing up the back. And I'll show you why we are trimming this before we are seaming the back. So here is our trim that's been applied to the bottom. I still need to sew down that bottom row on each one of these rows, but I just want to give you a, a sense of what that might look like. We have closed up the back with a half inch seam allowance, and I'm gonna turn this inside out and show you what that looks like from the outside. But one thing just really to talk about, when you're sewing this together, you want to do your best to match these horizontal lines. So it feels like it's an unbroken and even um, uh, pattern. And then you wanna do your best to try to align the, the, the velvet ribbon. That's not as good as it probably should be, but um, I wanna get this done and, and show it to you so um, you can work on it. But you know, it's just basically by doing it by eye and matching and doing your best to match. When we look on the inside, you'll see that we have, again, sewn up the back seam, but in this case, we've sewn it up with a half inch seam allowance. We've um, left it open three inches from the top of the folded edge, and we then have turned under, at least on this side, we've turned under and slip stitched uh, the, um, the dress fabric only to the lining. So remember, this you have got a lining here, so those stitches won't show on the front of the of the dress fabric. So now we're going to do this um, the second line and come back and show you how we're going to attach this to the waistband. 
So I want to talk a little bit about cutting, but also about the layers that you're going to need for this project in terms of the, the lining, the um, tarlatan interlining, and the silk. Um, one thing just to talk about is that this is a custom printed fabric. It's a rec uh, I think it's recreated from a 19th century original fabric by the Carmel Dahl shop from their collection. Um, it's been um, been woven custom, and it is um, it's a check. So there's some regularity in it. Um, it's not like a, it's a repeat pattern, and it's quite consistent. So what we really want to do when we're cutting out our pieces is try to get them to be as aligned as possible. When I say aligned, I mean you would you know ideally, and this is off, this is obviously your um, decision, but um, ideally you'd want the point of the waistband to align with one of these stripes. Um, you would want the ba bottom of the waistband to align with um, one of the um, horizontal stripes uh, that form the checks, uh, because I think that will really give you a beautiful, you know, um, sort of intentional look. I think Michael calls this fussy cutting. But you're going to see that there's a little bit, you know, the fabric itself, um, even though it appears completely geometric in the pattern or rather uh, perpendicular and parallel, it's a little bit off. This is a, this, this piece that I'm showing you here is going to be cut on the fold. So it's going to be identical on both sides. So what I would recommend you do is cut out your lining first and use your lining, the entire piece of your lining, and position it over your fabric before you cut it to get exactly the position you're looking for. So you can have, you know, uh, as I said, it's going. there's gonna be a little bit of a difference, but we're covering some of these up, these edges with velvet ribbon, so you're not really gonna see that. I think probably the most important things are your bottom line and getting this on the point that you want it to be. So there are going to be um, three layers here. If you sort of think about this like a sandwich, you're going to have, and there's no right or wrong side to this fabric, you're going to have a bottom layer of this white tarlatan, which is a, um, it's a little bit stiffer. We want a little bit more stiffness in this waistband than we would in the Bretels. Uh, so you're going to be using two different types of tarlatan. No one's going to see the white, so it doesn't matter. So you're going to lay your silk over the tarlatan. Tarlatan is going to be your bottom layer. Then you're going to layer your lining over your silk. And then you're going to sew it on three sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to trim your corners and your point. You're going to clip all of your curves and then you're gonna turn it inside out. And so what's basically gonna happen is you're gonna encapsulate that tarlatan layer. I'm sure you guys have done this many times, but encapsulate that tarlatan layer between the silk, the outer layer, and the inner layer of the lining, and it's gonna give this nice finished effect. You're not sewing across the bottom. You're going to, um, um, and I'll show you, uh, we're going to turn that up and we're going to apply some twill tape to it to give it extra strength. And then we're going to set it aside and um, until we're ready to attach the skirt to the waistband. So um, I will show you what that looks like when it is turned inside out and pressed. So here's the waistband. It's been sewn together, turned inside out um, after we've trimmed the seams and clipped the corners and uh, clipped the curves so they would turn nicely. Um, we've sewn a a piece of um, twill tape onto the bottom and we've then turned it over, pressed it, tucked the ends of the twill tape to the each side or the left and the right side and we've slip stitched it to the lining only making sure that we don't go through the back. So the next thing we're going to do with the waistband is we're going to be attaching it to the skirt once the skirt is assembled and then we'll be trimming it. We don't trim it at this point. Um, it's best to have it when the skirt is ready to, uh, to be joined to the waistband. So we'll, um, we'll get back to that uh, at that step. We've attached the skirt, the cartridge pleating, to the waistband. And the way we've done that is with very small 
um, little stitches through each one of these loops or the gathers. And you know, we want to use little tight stitches. You want to use small stitches because you will see them a little bit from the front. We're going to be putting a black velvet um, sort of waistband around this. We're also going to be trimming uh, the top edge with the narrower velvet as part of our next step. Um, but just wanted to give you sort of a, an idea of how this looks. It's a very, very full skirt. Um, and that cartridge pleating really helps to pull in a great deal of fabric. You might also want to just try to, you know, very gently sort of tug down. Um, you want these gathers to sort of lay rather flat um, before you put the velvet on. So um, we will trim that and we will be right back. The Bretels have been sewn together, uh, again, along the long edges, um, this shaped edge and the uh, slightly curved edge. The ends were left open for turning. Um, we clipped our inner point here so it would it would press well. We've clipped our um, our points so they would come to a nice points, and we have um, clipped the seam here so it would where it's curved so it would turn nicely. Uh, we turned inside out. We pressed it and we overcast the ends. Uh, the next step that we'll do with these is we'll apply the black velvet trim to the edge. Now this is your um, opportunity to sort of, you know, correct maybe some shapes that you might not like or make sure it's, it looks um, perfectly symmetrical. So what we would do is sewing from the, uh, the fabric side or the inside, we would sew tiny stitches along this little inner ridge here to the... Uh, that's the edge of the of the black velvet ribbon. Um, we're going to be mitering the corners, uh, mitering the inner corners, outer corners, and then once we've done the um, inner row, we're going to turn it over and we're going to whip the outer edge to the outer edge of the bretelle. Then once that's done, and we've done this side, you can turn it over and without steam, very lightly press it if you want to get a nice um, a nice uh, finish. I would suggest if you are going to do that, again, no steam. Um, I would not move the iron back and forth. I would just set the iron down so you don't ruin the nap. So once we have finished trimming the other bretelle, we're going to set these aside until we're ready to attach them to the waistband. And once the waistband is attached to the skirt, we will do that. So our bretelles have been attached. We've fit this to our doll and just made sure that it fit well. And we secured it with a pin in back while we did that. And then we stitched down on all three sides of the bretelle inside. And we also stitched at the top. Once that was done, we took our two widths of velvet ribbon. The thinner we applied to the top and the thicker we applied to the bottom. We, again, we sewed that on both edges of the velvet ribbon, both on the top and the bottom. And then we put in our, our hooks and we put in our corresponding thread loops, making sure that it fit to our doll. So now we're going to dress her and move on to her cape. So here's our cape assembled. Um, it's made up of uh, four pieces of fabric, um, two pieces from the dress fabric that are identical. When you cut them, you would really want them to be identical, very much like the bretelles, so you have a mirror um, image or a mirrored or flipped. So they're when they're on the doll and it's closed, you know, these lines will meet up. And ideally, you'll have this nice little chevron pattern in the back where they join. Um, so basically uh, two pieces of dress fabric, identical, um, but, but flipped with the, um, the shoulders, uh, the shoulder darts taken in. <laughs> There's my little dog. 
And then um, the lining is actually also two pieces with the shoulder darts. And this is put together very much like you would put together um, a pillow or an envelope. You're basically putting it right side to right side and you're sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around these three sides. Um, once you've done that, you are clipping your, um, your points. You are clipping your curves so they'll turn nicely. You want to really clip into this. I think I probably could have done a better job of clipping into that. Um, so you have this like inner um, point will lay nicely. And um, you can trim the seam down if you want. I would trim it here so you don't have any bulk. And I would trim it at these points uh, where you want to have that nice crisp um, uh, corner. And then you turn it inside out. Um, make sure that you've got all your points out nice and sharp. And... Um, and press it, probably press it from the back. Um, one thing I do want to say is that, and I know that Michael Canadas has said this quite a bit, is try to avoid using steam on your iron because it can spit. Um, I sometimes will even iron on the opposite side. I try not to iron directly on the velvet, um, but I will iron on the opposite side because, you know, silk is fragile. I'll use dry iron. If it needs anything, there's just this great spritz bottle that you can use that really controls the spray. Uh, so once you've um, turned it inside out and you've pressed it, you're going to apply the wider velvet ribbon on all three sides and you're going to whip it to the edge and you're going to sew straight through this edge on the inside edge. Um, then you're going to apply your, uh, your narrower ribbon um, approximately the width of the ribbon away. Again, this is your decision how you want to do this. So, you know, it can be, um, it can be quite different. Um, and then um, basically what I did was I basted the neck opening, which is the only um, area that you leave open for turning. I'm basting that. And then I'm going to cut um, our bias uh, neck trim, apply that, and then um, come back and show you that finished with the hook and eye closure. So here's our finished cape. As you can see, we've stitched down both sides of the velvet ribbon, uh, the wider ribbon on the edge, and then the narrow ribbon approximately the same width of the ribbon inset. We've mited these corners. Um, on the outside, we've whipped that edge to the inside edge of the cape. And then we've taken our neckline bias and we have sewn it in place and given it a nice press. Um, again, I think I've already mentioned this to you. Really, when you're cutting this, you do want to be very intentional. As you can see, you want your lines to meet when the cape is closed or on the doll. And we've also just put a very simple little uh, metal hook and metal loop at the front so there would be a closure. I probably would move this back a little bit so there wasn't so much of a gap, but there it is. It's a very um, simple pattern uh, just with the darts, the back seam, and then you sew it together like a pillowcase, as we said, and leave the neck open for turning. And you can make this out of so many different types of fabrics and trims and all for different seasons. So I hope you enjoy that. So we've taken the hat form and we have overcast the edge of it first. It's sort of like a raw edge there. And then we've folded it down onto the brim and we've sewn it down with a running stitch. Now all of this is going to be hidden by this next step where you take your bias strip that's been provided you fold over about a quarter of an inch and press it down, but you also press down a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the top. And you lay that on top of your brim with a raw edge, exactly even with the edge of the brim. And then using that, that line, <laughs> let's see if I could do this on camera, you're going to sew this down. You're going to pull it a little bit, just a little bit as you're sewing it down so you get a nice taut um, bias trim. You can see 
This is the, the stitches that you've already made for the turnover of the brim, and these are your bias stitches. So again, all of this is going to be hidden because what you're going to do in the next step, once this is all sewn down, is you're gonna turn it to the inside of the brim, and you're gonna pull it taut, and you're going to sew it through at this point, <laughs> if you can see that, at this point. And that's going to be covered with a piece of black velvet ribbon. So you're never gonna see those stitches. So once we've, uh, we've sewn this all down and, um, and sewn it to the inside, so you've got this sort of nice little covered inner brim, we'll show you the next step, which is lining the hat. Here's our final hat. You can see that we've taken the self-fringed um, silk that's been cut on the straight. This is great. You can just basically take a little needle and start pulling away at these threads. But don't do too many at the same time. Just do maybe like one or two. You'll find it's much easier. And um, I've intentionally aligned them with the edge of the stripe. And the threads are going to be pulled out on the on the straight anyway, but <clears throat> meaning we've got where the black would be, we've taken it up into that blue line on all sides. And then we've <clears throat> folded it over, I think about three and a half inches from the top, and about one and a half inches um, from that top fold, we've gathered it tightly. And in this case, the instructions say to um, stitch it in place, but I glued it in place which is okay, I think, if you're comfortable using glue. And then we've attached the feather. We've basically taken some very small dots of glue along this edge. We've gently pressed it and held it in place, and then we've just let it sort of hang off on the front just to give it a little bit of playfulness. And then this shows you the inside finished. So again, <clears throat> we've after we had sewn on this bias trim, we pulled it into the crown and secured it at the base of the crown. Remember these, this black velvet ribbon is hiding your, all of your stitches. So just make sure that you're stitching where this is probably underneath this, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly at the base of the crown, but we've pulled that in and then we took our, um, our lining and we had pressed in the seam allowance. In this case, it's an eighth of an inch on both sides of that. We then um, sewed it with just very small stitches, again, following the line of the inside of the crown. And then we gathered up the center tightly. You know, you can seam this little piece if you want, but it's not really gonna come loose. We gathered it up and we tied it off. So that is your, your hat. And these little pre-covered forms from Carmel Doll Shop are great because I've done some, <coughs> excuse me, I've molded some hats. And um, this really is a time-saving uh, and, and they're really uh, wonderful colors and patterns that they have available. So that's your hat. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.